All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Learn with Lex. You can see here we're playing the $11 6 max. We're going to focus in this video on short stacking. Uh, we've been away for a while, but obviously we've grinded scoop and given you a lot of content there. Uh, so we're back with our regular programming and Learn with Lex. Uh, I know you guys are very excited about it. And of course, we're going to keep doing it. So today we're going to learn about short stacking. A lot of times you guys think your tournament's over, um, but patience is a key and good strategy is also very important. As usual, no poker lingo. I might introduce some simple words to just start uh, uh, teaching you some. Um, but overall, we're going to talk about poker in a very logical way. Um, and just talk about why your tournament's not over when you have 18 big blinds. Um, in the top left here, you can see the runtime of the tournament, so you actually get to see uh, just how patient I am or sometimes how long you have to wait. Uh, in other videos of Learn with Lex, I highly recommend checking those out because you'll see plenty of situations also where I get down to five, six, seven big blinds um, and we um, uh, actually are able to make a comeback. So. Uh, let's just jump straight into the tournament. I'm going to talk about every single time I feel like I have a situation or even if it's not a situation like when I fold some bad hand preflop that I think you guys might play and then we'll talk about it for a little bit. All right, so believe it or not, we have jack six offsuit. It's a pure min raise. I will very much say if this was 2.1 or 2.2, I would fold this hand. But for pure min raise, I'm getting better than four to one odds. Uh, so I'm going to call and something that's really important to remember is that it's very hard to make big mistakes when you're a short stack because let's say you make a little bit of a misplay after the flop you only do it with nine big blinds right that's something really important to consider all right so really good flop for us now it's very important not to even when you're short stack not to blast with these hands too much uh, you can still make small raises if you have a hand like queen eight and you want to make a little bit of a play at it you could also make it this size and you also wouldn't want to put in nine big blinds so definitely doing something quirky like this gives us some uh, options uh, for when we have a different set of hands which is very important obviously we're going to call it off we have top pair uh, nine big blinds and unfortunately have queens but that's fine uh, and again we lose a pop but it's only nine big blinds that we lose all right i rebought here uh this this slot, this is usually what ends up happening. Uh, this slot is usually uh, the one where I enter a lot of tournaments. And this actually comes back to an important bankroll uh, uh, thing that you guys ask me about bankroll management sometimes. If you buy in late in tournaments and you have a shorter stack, variance goes up. That means that your swings will increase. That technically means that a $4 tournament now effectively plays as a $7 tournament, for instance. So it's very important that you don't play above your bankroll uh, by registering tournaments very late. Definitely folding here. So, you know, 15 big blinds is fine. Don't start panicking just because you have 15 bigs. You see an ace. This ace is dog shit. All right. So, uh, multi way here. We're definitely going to call uh, suited hands play very well, especially when you're short. If you flop, uh, again, we flop the jack. If you uh, flop something, a uh, flush draw, it's very easy to go for it. And again, because we're short, uh, it's very hard to make a big mistake. Now, don't make the mistake to just jam it in here because you, you see something and you don't want to have a decision. Um, you lose out so much money if the preflop raiser has king queen, puts in two big blinds. Uh, to lose that value would be awful. Um, so do not do that. Uh, big bets have to go for it. People spew. People do uh, lots of uh, lots of really weird shit. So uh, not going to fold a jack at this stage. And this is the nice thing, right? If you have 30 big blinds and you call here and you get into a really complicated spot, then jack deuce actually looks a little bit less appetizing. But... Uh, this just makes it very easy because we're only risking 12 big blinds and i think that this is something that you guys really need to uh, uh get in your head so to say is is when you're short stack in the big blind you can still defend very wide a lot of people think they have to play tighter as a short stack when other people raise right here you get called with these hands this happens all the time as well um so we win a really nice spot our opponent had two outs for 35 big blinds you know no sweat I just want to reiterate that if they would have bet uh, smaller, if they would have bet smaller, I would have gone for a small raise again, uh, like we did in the other scenario. It's very important to be consistent in that. All right, so 25 big blinds here. Uh, one thing that's very important for you guys to know is that hands uh, suited broadways uh, make excellent uh, all-in hands over uh, raises and calls, over uh, raises, especially multi-way, I have to say. Um, actually, I think I'm just going to jam it in here. Uh, look at that. I can win 16.5% of my stack. Uh, there's 4.3 big blinds in the middle. I have 24.5. So I can just instantly go to 29 big blinds if I jam. 
Um, the nice thing is if they have a hand like King Jack offsuit, they might even fold. What if they have a hand like Ace Nine and they, you know, and they don't want to smoke? So um, I'm just gonna jam here. I will say that if they had 25 big blinds, I definitely wouldn't do it. The fact that uh, effectively, uh, you know, effectively play means what's the biggest stack we're actually playing for was 15 big blinds. So oh, I got 16 big blinds before they limped. So. Uh, very important to remember and um, these are the kind of spots where you just have to show some aggression you know sometimes when i'm streaming uh, people will say stuff like "Lex, aren't you gambling too much with pre-flop all-ins but what what people don't understand is like this this four big blinds is relatively risk-free uh, limping ranges are pretty weak especially at these limits in higher stakes people will uh, balance a lot more meaning that they'll have good hands and bad hands but generally in the lower stakes i think people um uh, limp the weaker stuff and just want to see a flop so it's relatively risk-free uh, plus uh, versus the stacks i'm only wagering like 60 70 percent of my stack and boom there's four big blinds and the next time boom there's four big blinds again you know and i could be at 32 big blinds whereas if you don't take those spots uh, you're gonna still be stuck at 24 and then all of a sudden the blinds start going really fast okay so 30 big blinds Lots of short stacks at the table, but the nice thing uh, about raising hand like King 10 offsuit is that it actually blocks a lot of, uh, or a reasonable amount of strong hands, right? Um, I wouldn't want to raise a hand like 6-5 suited here because it has the opposite effect. And I know that a lot of times people joke about blockers and blockers aren't real, etc. But the fact that I have a King and 10 makes it less likely for other people to have hands that they can show up with, like King Jack suited, uh, King 10 suited, uh, 10 Jack suited, Ace 10, whatever. Whatever you want to say, so... We're gonna check here though and see what happens. Now we're just gonna fold. So we're multi way to the flop. Not a good turn. Nothing to play for here. Big bet. Over here, we raise with kings. Sorry, at action. We raise with kings, the big blind defense. Okay, we got check raised. I'm actually just gonna uh, put in a, a re raise here. Uh, it's the big blind. It's a smallest check. It's the smallest check raise. Uh, I just want to get some value. I don't really want uh, them to be able to see the turn. I think it's very tempting for them as well to just get a queen in right there. Uh, so kings take it down. Uh, apologies that I kind of jumped in the middle of the hand, but I'm recording multiple of these videos at once. So, you know, there was a big spot in another hand that you'll see in a different video. All right, guys. So we're back. Uh, one thing you want to consider is uh, lower pocket pairs under the gun. I would start with pocket fives raising here, fives and sixes at around 25 big blinds. Um, as everyone gets deeper, that uh, the the I would start going down. So if we have 30 big blinds um, or 35, I'd raise fours. If we have 40 big blinds, I could start raising some threes. But you have to be very careful uh, with that. So we always want to consider if we have a good hand to go all in here. But I think if people limp off of seven and have big blinds, I'm a little bit too worried that they're baiting me, meaning that they want me to go all in. Um, it's just so easy to jam yourself. I just can't, you know, like, what, what is it, like, king five suited? I just want to see a flop? Mm, I don't know. Um, it's possible, but I generally think all of those hands are also hands people are just going to go all in with. Okay. Welcome to low stakes. <laughs> Had a gutter. All right, king jack. Let's see what happens. All right, so if they go all in, we're going to go all in. Uh, very easy for us to go all in. Hand is not strong enough uh, to try and bait their all in with. Um, we just want to get some value. Um, what's also really important is we're going to go all in from the small blind to the big blind with these stack sizes so often that we also want some hands in there that aren't just pure trash. You know, we don't want to always have the 5 4 suited or, or the queen 6 offsuit. We also want to have some king jacks, etc. So that works pretty well. Uh, this hand with deeper stack, this would always be an open on the button, but you have to think about how short you are. Uh, the big blind is going to jam a lot on us. Remember that we have a very big wide range when we open on the button. So the blinds are going to attack that, especially when they have a uh, short stack, as they should. All right, we don't really want to raise this. Ace 10 offsuit, we raise from every position though. This is a classic example of a hand that I would defend against a min raise if this was a two big blind raise, but 2.3, we're actually going to get out. So makes a big difference if people pure min raise or 2.3. So please make sure that you check that. The raise size definitely dictates how many big blinds you can defend. Okay, here we have it. Ace queen, 16 big blinds. Somebody opens. Look at that. We already win 25% of our stack if everybody folds. That's amazing. 
that, that just also shows you how much you can pick up with short stacking, right? All right, they folded. And king 10. I'm gonna go for a min raise. Again, the shorter our stack is, the, the, the smaller our raise size becomes. All right, so two people let in. Very easy fold. You guys love the showdowns. Wow. All right, we're gonna limp along here. Reasonable flop. The one problem is, is that, you know, when people limp non aces and kings, etc., what do they limp a lot? It's gonna be queen jack, jack 10, queen 10. So I'm not necessarily too thrilled about this hand just yet. Now that I've seen a check from the limper, I definitely wanna take a stab at this. So I'm gonna take a stab. Obviously, the big blind can always be a problem. They can have any random nine, any random six. They have 100% of their hands, so they have nine deuce, nine four, right? Six, eight off, whatever. All right, so this is nice as soon as we got some info about that range. And that's why I like betting the turn a lot better than I like betting the flop, because now we got information about that range. Over here, we're gonna raise Ace 10 suited. No reason to jam just yet. We have 15 big blinds. You can definitely min raise, do all this stuff. It happens a lot. And this is a dream spot, of course. We have one of the best hands in poker. Hope to get called. Boom. Go from 16 to 20. King Jack here, 18 big blinds. The button opens, very wide range. All right, so they folded for our King Jack. I'm sorry when I shoved the button. I had a big spot on another table for a different video. But we, the most important thing is that we jammed the King Jack and we got it through. King Jack is here to avenge itself, even though it won last hand, so that's weird. Uh, so three big blinds, we're just gonna isolate all in. Absolutely fine, it's gonna happen. And we're gonna min raise. Ace five is a pure open from this spot. Very easy call versus them or them. They're gonna, you know, a stack with nine big blinds is gonna be so happy to have king 10 suitor or king nine suitor. They're just gonna go all in. We can call that, but we definitely don't wanna start uh, going all in with our hands. So we can just min raise. You can see, just see from all these videos that min raising just still got so many folds. You know, there's still so, so much maneuverability or times that you just play versus the big blind and you get a cheap bet on the flop and, you know, and it just works. And guys, I think that's a nice time to conclude our short stack adventure here uh, from Learn With Lex. If you have any questions or comments or things you want to say, make sure you drop them down in the chat below. Like and subscribe if you uh, enjoyed what you saw. And I'll see you guys next time for another episode of Learn With Lex.